Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome to FAIR TV. Let's take a look at some of what was in the news this past week. It's hard to imagine alarmist coverage of Iran's nuclear program could get any more alarming, but count on corporate media to find a way. Many outlets drew one conclusion from the latest report from the International Atomic Energy Agency. Iran is enriching more uranium, probably for a nuclear weapon. But is that really what this report says? The New York Times headlined its piece, Inspectors Confirm New Work by Iran at Secure Nuclear Site. The next day's headline was, Report on Iran Nuclear Work Puts Israel in a Box. The paper stressed Israeli impatience, saying the report has put Israel in a corner. Quote, the report comes at a critical moment in Israel's long campaign to build Western support for stopping Iran from developing a nuclear weapon. Close quote. But the real news in the report is the once again affirmation of what should be old news. There is no evidence Iran has diverted any material for a weapons program. And even more important, much of Iran's uranium stockpile has been converted into a form that would be very difficult to use in a nuclear weapon. That fact was mentioned deep in the New York Times article, but independent analysts and journalists thought this was the real news here. Mohammed Sahimi's report on the PBS Tehran Bureau website and Gareth Porter's article for the Interpress Service gave readers these details. But many corporate media outlets were more interested in ratcheting up the tension. Iran's nuclear threat is a constant media theme. The existence of organized labor, meanwhile, that mostly gets a nod once a year. So Labor Day meant there were not one but three union leaders on the PBS NewsHour on September 3rd. But faced with unemployment over 8%, gaping inequality between the wealthiest and everyone else, corporate profit hoarding, and the daily evidence of hardships many people with jobs are facing, NewsHour's discussion wasn't about how unions could be vitalized, what obstacles they face, or even other ways workers could be protected and their rights advanced. No, the main question was, why don't union workers make less money? Judy Woodruff called this the larger argument. The larger argument that in these tight economic times, uh, the public has the right to expect uh, employees of, of organized labor to, uh, to take the same cuts that the private sector has taken. One guest, James Hoffa, pointed out that that argument, as used by Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, wasn't really true. When unions called Walker's bluff, and offered to negotiate, he wasn't interested, and his real goal of eliminating a collective bargaining for public sector workers was revealed. Woodruff's response was to re-ask the same question to another guest. And Mary Kay Henry, an extension of that, that same question, the public often looks at union members and says, wait a minute, why can't they, especially public uh, service employees, why can't they accept some of the same cuts that private sector workers have had? Now, maybe it's that people resent unionized workers more than, say, corporate CEOs. But suggesting that struggling workers' main problem is that other workers aren't suffering enough, well, that just seems like a crummy way to celebrate Labor Day. And finally, we know the point of the political conventions is to give voters a gauzy, sentimental portrait of the presidential candidates. And it turns out media outlets can do that, too. A perfect, perhaps unbelievable example of this was caught by the website Mediaite. An August 27th CNN documentary, Romney Revealed, included what reporter Tommy Christopher dubbed the most ridiculous sentence I've ever heard on television. Here's the setup. Mitt Romney got four deferments during the Vietnam War. CNN host Gloria Borger glosses that, saying that he was exempt as a student with a high draft number. So in 1968, Romney went to France as a Mormon recruiter, and, well, here's Borger. In 1968, France was a dangerous place to be for a 21-year-old American, but Mitt Romney was right in the middle of it. Yes, you heard that right. In 1968, the year that saw the highest number of American deaths in Vietnam, over 16,000, France was a dangerous place to be a 21-year-old American because French people were protesting the Vietnam War. According to a fellow missionary, this meant there were no trains, no buses, no newspapers, and even no letters from home, which is how Mitt Romney got money. If this was intended as parody, it was brilliant. 
but somehow we doubt that was the point. This has been FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for joining us this week.